Yeah, Kofi Jama is actually born and bred on the sake home, a musician. I see myself as a musician. I started as a rapper. So I, I, I started my music way back. Um, I think when I like when I was like up for SHS. Yeah, yeah. That's when I started writing professionally. And I I started as a rapper and like winning some competitions around your sake home on radio and all the stuff. So that's it. That's where the music dream really started and that's what has made me who I am right now. There's a saying that uh or say from me be a dresser without a chain. Charlie, let's let's talk about uh was it music throughout? And I say you had to branch to do certain things before you came back to music. Well, it was all like the music was the most important thing because um that was what I really wanted to do after SHS. Okay. Because even back in SHS, I would be in school, like I would, I would. People would be th like thinking I was in school or something, but I was out in the studio somewhere trying to get some songs yeah. out. So the passion was there. So after SHS, I had to whatever branch that I had to branch out was to support my music career. So I didn't do anything per se like outside of the music that's not like so you, you actually had to branch to go and get from some money yeah, or stuff yeah to come back and yeah. continue with music yeah so was, the work was part-time the work was part-time i was listening to and I, I wanted to uh, uh, verify this from there yeah. i was listening to your interview with um zion felix yeah and he stated that you were um as we say you were a mochi person yeah before you started you, you before yeah you went to do that job and came back to yeah music. yeah is it true it, it's it started out like as the first time i finished the SH, shs i was looking for a job and around that time i couldn't find like any notable job okay. that i could do like to support myself so a friend had actually introduced me to that job oh. so i went for one time and like i realized this is no man for me so i tried i tried it out but not actually like carrying dead bodies and all those stuff so i tried it out but it didn't work for me but the next time was a funeral service mm -hmm. but then they were like they that the old boys yeah, they yeah, actually yeah. carried their coffin yeah. so i did that i did that's the one time i did that job okay. and around that time i think something was meant to happen because yeah. the person that like was deceased was a really big person mm -hmm. so that actually gave me a chance to be actually in a room and actually near to kings and yeah, okay, residents okay. and all those stuff yeah okay so just because you couldn't find a job after school yeah that was when you were introduced to, to this video yeah um before we even continue there's a story i want you to motivate someone out there charlie ghana will be easy for real you know for real. You know the hustle is real and um sometimes people like if you don't come out to share the story everybody see you on tv yeah, with yeah. all Thank that you, everybody yeah. figure say charlie life has been easy yeah. from day one charlie but just one minute and yeah. this be your camera just motivate one young artist or young person out there before we continue the, the, the interview so so as the thing goes it's all about the dedication and what you want to get out of life so at the end of the day it, it don't it don't matter the rocky places or the debt that you have to go through before you get clean yeah. at the end of the day you matter getting clean is the main thing that you should focus on so it, it don't matter the jobs or something that you can do because you don't have to see yourself as as someone that a job can define you yeah. you have to define that job for yourself so it don't matter what hassle you have to go through forget about being shy forget about people laughing at you because i've been a security person before okay. and around that time i was like i was like i was uh, like i was in the competition on the same time on radio mm -hmm. and around it the osakum people really knew me around that time but at the same time i was a security person so people would see me on, like hear me on radio and come and meet me at the gate and like whoa is this the same guy out here but i didn't let that deter me from what i wanted so that's the advice you should go hard you should go hard all day so then then people who think you have one hit song out and you can see you be crying and you're doing yourself some way or Charlie the streets is hard or really? Charlie let's come to your music Charlie I was uh, I looked through your YouTube channel Charlie yeah. lots of collaborations yeah. massive ones Sefa uh, Medical yeah Ice Springs yeah. and um, that recent one is with Stoneboy yeah excuse my language but i wouldn't term you as the person who is 
dare to be having this kind of co uh, collaboration. No, true. So how did all this work out for you? Well, first is grace. Mm -hmm. That's the first aspect. And me, the fact that me believe, I like me believing in what I have yeah. and like never giving up. Because yeah. around that time that I was being a security guard and all those stuff, that was where I, I was supposed to give up. Mm -hmm. But as I, I rise above the this is the reward i think god is just talking back to me mm -hmm. so that's it. the first one is god's grace and me being able to find my label that's got one record yeah. Yeah. they helped actually a lot they just spring up my career but you then um calligraph jones and the nice prince yeah charlie <laughs> underground power who picked it you know you had to hit her like that how did it how did it work out well that's shout out to jay sent that's tennis producer yeah. um he's actually sent me the beat for me to lay some verses on it okay so I, I i sent it back to him and he, he called me the next day telling me that ice prince heard it and he wanted to jump on it wow so ice prince actually loved the track to the extent that he, he also actually invited calligraph jones also to be on the track it was that smooth way that's smooth that's smooth that's why i'm saying it's grace it's, it's, it just happened okay you then you and stoneboy that well, was hard enough to work out well <laughs> stoneboy actually this there was a donation that i did during the, the start of the COVID yeah. season and there was this track in the day after that i laid yeah. uh, under the the, the run-ups on my social media so he, he saw it and commented commented on the post that me day up this is this is it jama this is the team and he just yeah, he wrong. just offered for a remix. He just like actually loved the track, and people close to him were like actually telling me that he like he really enjoyed that track. So okay. he was out of he just loving that track. So that would be the last song but, um, before you go. But um, I can't let you sit here. They will go talk. Uh, Charlie, make feel some bass, kill some bass for you. <laughs> Whoa. You never know how I'ma survive this life like a sinner. You fellas never see me, so me a John sinner. No money in the bank, let's so me Jimmy home and but I'm looking for my dream. You know I'm a breadwinner. The worst never less than strike is a Benzema. Gotta get it now, mini bread, they change china. Booze with my crew, then cruise up in my bima. All I wanna do is raid her soon in swimmuna. So I check us up, bet you why you can toma. We gonna tell my home, I'll be here now, my tin up home, I'm a TJ, yo. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie. Before you go, uh, one, uh, one last thing. Uh, who you, you don't want get? Who you don't want get on your song as of now? Who are you looking up to? If given the chance, say, mention one artist name you want to get on the jam right now. That your camera. Tell the tell the artist. Well, it was it was Stone Boy. <laughs> now I have Stone Boy, so I'm still trying to like Af like yeah, true like Africa. It's better boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 